table strike back. What's up, everybody? My name is Scott, and you're watching Kentucky Ballistics. We're back out on the range, and today I have something very awesome to show you. This is a greener harpoon gun, and this is the exact make and model that they used in the movie Jaws. I am very excited to try this thing out today. This does not work off of compressed air like modern harpoon guns. This actually uses a blank which is placed in there, a 38 special blank to be exact. And that 38 special blank is used to propel your one pound harpoon. These things are actually pretty hard to find. They're about 50 years old. And when they made these, they originally came in these big wooden cases. Normally the harpoon, oh dear. <laughs> Normally the harpoon gun would be disassembled and in this box you have your harpoons, places for your string, and for the string holder. This is a very cool collector's item and most people would probably keep this harpoon gun in the case and never fire it. But that's not how we do things here. I am very excited and very eager to try this thing out and see just how effective it is and would it actually be useful if Jaws attacked me in real life. <laughs> So first things first, I want to see how much water I can make it through with one of these harpoons. I have three five gallon water jugs and I am very curious to see what happens. You may notice our setup today. I have this big piece of cloth, which is called the shield and it's an archery backstop. This is used at like archery competitions so you don't lose all your arrows. I'm hoping that this assists me today and I don't lose or damage the only three harpoons I have. Okay, I am all loaded up. I do not have the string attached to the harpoon. I'm not going to be using that today. Let's see how many water jugs it takes to stop a one pound harpoon. I'm going with two. Oh! Oh, I hit a little high. We made it all the way to the third water jug. I may need to do that again. I feel like I just kind of shot through the water jugs and never hit water. Well, hit some water. That's stuck in there pretty good. Ah! All right. Does not look like the harpoon is damaged at all. Let's take another shot, and I'm going to aim a little lower this time. Here we go. Oh! Wow! Man, that thing is not playing around. That's, that's pretty serious. We made it all the way out the back of the third water jug. I love serrated knives. There we go. Not gonna lie, I'm pretty impressed right now. A one pound harpoon apparently does a lot of damage. I never seen one make it through three barrels before. Looks like this guy here, he's been out of the water too long. I'll make sure these guys don't, I don't want anything to happen to them, you know? Don't you go dying on me! Okay, up next, I want to see how many sharks this harpoon gun will go through. I know we don't have sharks in Kentucky, but have you ever seen the movie Sharknado? The weather's been getting crazy lately. There's a good chance these things could just fall from the sky any day. Judging from what happened to the water jugs, I think I'm going to make it through all three of these sharks. No problem. All right, here we go. Oh! Let's inspect, shall we? Look at that cut. That is a big wound channel there. Both sides continued on, went through this side of the shark. Of course, sharks. What's inside a shark? I've always wondered. 
that subscribe button. This guy here, he got hit through both sides. Also, mama says sharks are ornery because they got all them teeth and no toothbrush. So this archery backstop, I believe is rated for like, you know, practice tips. I am almost 100% certain it said not to use broadheads, but I thought, ah, you know, broadheads are moving really fast. This is a one pound harpoon. How fast could it possibly be moving? Apparently pretty fast. That went clean through this thing. And it may not look like it, but this thing weighs like 40 pounds. It is thick cloth. And the harpoon just blew right through it. So we do not have sharks in Kentucky. But what we do have is rabid turkeys. I have here a turkey made out of 10% clear ballistic gel. This is made by Clear Ballistics, and I have to say, it's a pretty cool target. Let's see what happens when we shoot it with a one pound harpoon. All right, here we go. Oh! Wow! Okie dokie. Well, that was quite a bit of gel to make it through. And <laughs> we almost made it to the very back of the turkey. That is one heck of a wound channel. That is very, very impressive. What happens when I try to pull this thing out of here though? I wonder if those hooks will engage. Yep. So, these harpoons, they have these hooks and they open up when you try to pull this out and that's to keep the harpoon in the target. Oh dear. Oh! Oh! I would say that harpoon guns are pretty effective against turkeys. You know what hurts worse than a harpoon gun? Someone pinching you on St. Patrick's Day because you're not wearing green. Be sure and check out the Kentucky Ballistics St. Patrick's Day shirts so you don't get pinched. There's a link in the description down below. You know what's even more terrifying than sharks? Giant octopuses. So Nick, we're gonna find out how effective the harpoon gun would be against the giant octopus. Looks like he got it the worst. Right through the eyeball. Oh dear. No harpoon in there. It's right here. We almost, okay, it didn't make it all the way through that time. This may be more difficult to get out because it didn't go all the way through. Let's see what I can do here. Oh, oh we got one. Maybe I can just kind of rotate it. There we go. Let's check out our other octopuses. This dude right here, he got hit right in the top of the head and came out the back. We got one in the back of this one and I hit towards the top. Giant octopuses and giant sharks are one thing, but Loch Ness monsters are a whole nother ball game. Scenario. You are in the Loch Ness, floating around in your boat, and all of a sudden, the Loch Ness monster pops up. I've been shooting everything pretty close today, and that's because I had not fired this yet. But now that I'm a little more comfortable, I've scooted back a little ways for 25 yards away. Let's see if we can hit old Nessie. All right, I guess I'm gonna aim a little high. Oh! So it's looking like the harpoon gun is not made for distance. Uh, we kind of smacked Nessie, I think a little sideways. Didn't fly in perfectly straight, but it looks like I still did enough damage to take it out. Um, ah, there's our hit right there. I tell you what, I think I could tape that up 
and we can take one more shot. I was aiming high last time and I hit high and to the left. Let's see if I can do any better this time. Ow! I'm not really sure what happened. Let's see here, do we have a new hole? Yes, we have a new hole. We've uh, ripped Nessie's right peck out. And oh dear, yep. We blew through the back right here. Yeah, there's definitely no putting a thumb in that one. Which I can just tie this shut. Let's take one more shot at Nessie, here we go. Oh! All right, seems like 10 to 15 yards is the optimum distance for the harpoon gun. Oh, right in the neck too. I felt that one. So, if you're encountered by the Loch Ness Monster, you wanna make sure it's at least about 10 to 15 yards away before you fire. Next scenario, you're watching TV and it's Shark Week. You get a little too excited and you're watching it while holding your greener harpoon gun. Are you gonna have to just replace your TV or are you gonna have to replace your drywall as well? All right, here we go. So here's the thing. I have three harpoons, two are original and one is a remake. This is the remake and it didn't want to fit on too well. So when it shot, I lost some pressure and it did not fly very fast. I mean, it barely did anything and I caught a little blowback. So I guess that means I'm gonna have to use one of the originals. This is what I should have done in the first place. Okay, round two. Oh! Let's take a look. Yeah, this time we made it through the entire TV and into our backstop, but we did not make it. Oh, oh, this is a mess right here. There we go. Oh, we're still in business. Looking good. <laughs> These harpoons are pretty tough. So now I'm curious to see how far one of these will shoot. I wasn't gonna do this originally, but now after shooting through a TV and seeing that it didn't damage the harpoon at all, I don't think a little dirt is gonna hurt it. Here we go. Give a slight, well, let's, let's go about like that. Three, two, one. Oh, it's flipping. It's flipping. Wow, that went pretty far. Looks like this thing made it Roughly a hundred yards. <laughs> Luckily, it did not land on this side. It is not filled with dirt. And it still looks like it's in good shape. Look at the way it landed. That came down with some force. Well, that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. What did you think about the greener harpoon gun? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure and give it a like. And if you're not subscribed to Kentucky Ballistics, do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button. Also, be sure and check me out on Kentucky Customs, Kentucky Ballistics Shorts, Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links to all those can be found in the description down below, along with a link to KentuckyBallistics.com, just in case you want to pick up a shirt. And as always, my name is Scott. Thank you so much for watching Kentucky Ballistics. I'll see you next time.